All right, guys. In today's Touch Designer tutorial, we will actually learn how to create this audio reactive visualizer. It's really nice and it's really catchy. If um, any of the background, uh, if it can be projected there, it 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 looks really amazing. And yeah, um, audio reactive, so pretty much you know takes all the check boxes for us. So yeah, let's learn how to create this beautiful audio reactive visualizer. But before we go there, I just wanted to uh, bring you guys to my Patreon page. And I just want to let you know that your support will be really appreciated. Um, it really means a lot. There's a lot um, that I actually do uh, for Patreons. Uh, you'd be able to get some exclusive tutorials, exclusive files and uh, pretty much you know the stuff that i upload on youtube as a video but you will be able to get things as a part of being a patreon so yeah uh, every every support will be appreciated i also want to show you my instagram if you guys can please follow me uh, there's a lot of good content that you would actually see so yeah feel free to follow me on instagram and it'll be amazing to see you uh, to be connected all right first thing first let's clear the canvas and we start with a simple thing which is called as constant so let's go to chop and let's define a constant and i'll make it as samples as a uh, as a name of that constant and initially i'll just go with 500 as um as the samples now you'd be wondering why do we need samples so just imagine this entire waveform has been designed with certain samples. And uh, we will be playing with chops a lot in, uh, in this tutorial. So we definitely need something to start with and which is where we're gonna go ahead. So what I really need is I need, um, I, I need a visualization, I need waves, um, I need that level of disturbance, I need ups and downs, right? So you can see there are like ups, downs, and a lot of movement which is happening. Again, it's audio driven, but uh, innate, you know, I need that level of movement. So how do we do that? So that pretty much can be attained by uh, having a noise. So if we look at noise, we definitely see the movement coming in. Perfect. Now. If you say noise, then uh, there are samples which are ranging from one to 600. That sample value can also be found out by uh, just cl middle click on the operator and we can see the sample values. So here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the value from 600 to 500. How do we do that? We go to channels and we see start and end. Currently it is connected to seconds, but we go to, uh, we change it to samples and end gets changed to sample as well. Now it's 599. We have 500 samples. That's perfect. We go and select this constant sample value and bring it down to end of uh, noise and we make it as minus one. And there we start with 500 as a sample. Done. So this is one thing uh, done from our end. Yes, what we need to do is we need to rename this as TY, okay? So this is my TY. Then let's have a pattern. Now this pattern will be working as TX for me, okay? Now we don't need a sine wave here. All we need is a ramp. But if you look at it, ramp has got, I mean, this pattern has got sample value from one to 1000, which we don't need it. So let's, drag this constant samples into length of pattern and which is where 500 uh, patterns has come up. Done. The thing that we need to do is let's use merge, right? And let's merge them together. Let's have a null, which will then be used for uh, instancing. Okay. Now we start with SOPs. Now SOP, I would basically go with add and I would say add point. Then we say convert. So convert it into a point, a uh, particle per point. Done. Then we say null. Then let's have geometry comp. Then we have camera. Done. And then let's have a material which is nothing but point sprite. So let's assign it as a material. Let's enable our render network. So let's go with render null 
and RGB K. Perfect. All right, so let's see the output. Do you see that fine, that very light, uh, a pale dot, uh, which is nothing but um, a particle that we have created as part of it. Now again, that can be made it uh, bigger by changing the constant point scale. So instead of one, let's make it as two. So it's much brighter now. Done, so this is good. Now let's enable the instancing. So we start to get to say things in a, a different state of um, our design. Okay, so we have instance operator, which is null one. Let's use TX, let's use TY. Brilliant, so we have the waveforms. But as you can see, uh, there is still polishing needed. So first thing first, let's go to render and change the resolution to 1024. This looks good. Uh, pixel format will change it to 32-bit float, uh, which brings sharpness to our uh, entire image, uh, which turns out to be good. I always use 32-bit float. Okay, so this is fine, but again, our waveforms are not into a proper order that I uh, look forward to, right? Uh, that can be fixed by just adding a math here. So uh, in pattern one, let's add a math. Now, the math is needed because, as you can see, the values are ranging from zero to one. And if you look at here, then it's the middle part is zero and then it is going towards one. So what we are trying to do is we just convert that range from zero to one to minus one to minus, uh, plus one. Done. We still have a lot of space. Now, there are two ways to resolve this issue. Um, one, we play around with these values and try to bring things into center or we go and play around with camera position and try to bring things into center. Or the other thing is we change the projection perspective, a projection of a camera from perspective to orthographic. The moment we do orthographic, this turns out to be a perfect position that I needed as part of my entire design. Okay. Now, again, if you want to zoom in, zoom out, you have ortho width. For now, let's just go with ortho width as 2.05. So at least we know that there is a little bit of space just for our own uh, satisfaction. We can definitely go with two, but again, it's depending on your taste. So this looks nice. Now, definitely the animation is pending. So let's go and animate our noise. So we start with abs time dot. Okay, let's not go with seconds for now. We go with frames, okay? Okay, it's frame. Okay, this is perfect. This is what I need, right? And now you can see that there's a lot of movement. Let's increase the period from one to two. So the movement is smooth and it looks really, really nice, okay? So this is cool. Uh, the other thing that I definitely need is um, the feedback, okay? So let's enable the feedback. Uh, so we go with feedback, we go with level, we go with transform, we go with uh, composite, where is composite? Uh, composite, okay, perfect. So this is what we need as a part of our network for now. And uh, let's just enable our feedback network properly. And once that is done, we all should be looking at some good output, okay? So this is already coming out to be nice, okay? This is really turning out to be nice. But what we really want to do is we just want to ensure that the level is a little bit reduced so it looks uh, good, okay? So this is what we need as a part of it. Now let's apply some colors. So how do we get colors? Um, let's get a noise, okay? As you can see, noise has got a resolution of 256. I'll just make it as one and one, done. Instead of monochrome, let's enable it as, um, let's make it colorful. Instead of, uh, let's animate it. So abs time dot seconds into 0.5 for now done let's apply it as a color so this is a good color that i get 
Now again, this is coming out to be too fast. Let's go and change it to 0.1. This is uh, very smooth, which is what we need as a part of it. Uh, we can change the opacity from 913 to 95 and let's see. Okay, so this is this is good. This is what we need as a part of it. Okay, uh, so this looks nice. Now, what's the other thing that we need? We need an audio. So definitely I've composed my own audio. Uh, if you guys want that audio, well, I mean, by being a patron, you should be able to download it. Otherwise, um, yeah, you can use any of your audio that you like and you should be able to get through. Uh, thanks. So, okay, let's have null first. So let's get null done and let's get audio out. So you should be able to listen to this music. Okay. Uh, all right, perfect. So now what we do is we go and say math and let's add both the channels. So we are combining it. Done. So it is just one channel that we are dealing with. Let's go and use analyze done. So this is one analyze that we are going to use, which is average. And then there is another analyze that we are going to use, which is maximum. All right. So, so we have used average and we have used the maximum. So we will be using both the properties to change the attributes of this noise. So let's use this average to change the roughness. So let's go and apply it to, okay. So this brings that stuff and let's use the analyze and change the app aptitude or the amplitude and as you can see it's already bringing the kind of results that we basically need now the other thing that you might want to do is um, currently the period is turned out to be two um, you can make it well you can make it as um, three I mean depending on what kind of output that we need we can make it as one as well and it's it's going to bring you some different output altogether the other thing that you definitely have in your control is instead of frames um, you can multiply it with 0.1 so you'd see a different output um, you can multiply it with five and we can see how well the output is coming up so again Oh, there's a lot that can be done, but this is something you should be able to create it very easily. Um, last thing that you may want to do is instead of 9.5, make it as 9.8. Okay. Um, let's just keep it as 9.5 for now. Um, then let's apply one more level. So let's apply a level. Let's increase the brightness from one to three. So it looks bright. Um, we can increase the contrast. So we see output much clean. And yeah, uh, this is what uh, we can actually produce as an output. The other thing that you definitely have an option is you can, you can leave it as uh, one, multiply it as one, and um, you can play with exponent. So you'll see the exponents. You can go and change. You can go all wild here. I mean, whichever value that you think could be appropriate for your um, uh, for your design, you pretty much can do that. Um, you change it to five. The other thing is you can increase the aptitude, uh, the amplitude. Um, make it as plus one. So you see the output much bigger. Uh, change it to one so you see a very subtle output now again you see a lot of big waves you can change the period and make it as subtle so yeah I mean there's there's a lot that can be done but this is something I wanted to bring it out and I um, I hope you really get a crux of the entire uh, design that we are creating as a part of it and um, yeah, uh, there's a lot can be done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I, 
I will definitely come up with more audio reactive content and uh, there are a lot of things that I already have in my pipeline for all of you um, uh, to come up with the tutorials and everything. So yeah, this is one of the audio reactive tutorial that you got to see today. And um, I'm, I'm saying goodbye from Sydney. It's Saturday here and I hope you guys have lovely weekend um, and I'll come back with more touch designer tutorial. Goodbye for now. Thank you so much. Bye.